Okay, so now we're in SketchUp, and this is where we're going to import the image and build a component of this, this woman on the beach. So the first thing to do is to go to File and choose Import. So click on that File dropdown, choose Import. And let's see, I'm going to go to my Dropbox Resources folder under Components, and then we've got our People and 2D Photo Reel. All right, so now what's important here is this is the image that we're going to use. We're just going to use the one girl for now. And we're using it as an image, not as a texture. So whenever, you know, you're, if you're using it as a texture, you have to actually, like, apply it to a, uh, to a, a surface. And so uh, because this model is empty, we would just want to use this as an image. And I'll choose Open. Now, I'm just going to click on the origin once, move my cursor to suggest a direction. And you'll notice that the, the measurements dialog box is giving me a width. Uh, I'm not real concerned about that. I just want to import that image and call it good. All right. So now, this this uh, image it is actually an entity defined as an image. Now, if I right click on an image, uh, well, actually, first let's um, let's let's flip her so she's standing up. So I'll go to my rotate tool, uh, rotate tool. The red arrows chasing each other, and with the rotate tool. This one, uh, this tool is kind of tricky. I used to always kind of orbit around in the model and find the axis I wanted to to rotate about, hold shift to lock it, and then set my my uh, center point of rotation. But really, an easier way to do this is to hover down here, like really anywhere on this edge, and click and drag. You know, most tools in SketchUp you don't want to click and drag, but with the rotate tool, I can click and drag and then set the axis of rotation and let go of the, the click, now I need to set my reference point. So my reference point really for this rotation doesn't matter because I set my reference line and no matter where that line is, I want to move 90 degrees off that line. So I type 9-0, enter. There we go. All right. So we've got, uh, we've got our standing up now. So let's, let's go ahead and scale our model. So instead of uh, using our scale tool, uh, and trying to you know shrink her down and, and eyeball like how tall she is, all we have to do is use our tape measure tool. So the tape measure tool, I can go in here and measure from like here to here, and then I'm going to type in five foot eight enter. So I I measured a distance basically from her toes to her to her, the top of her head, and then. It, it told me that actual dimension, and then I type in 5 apostrophe 8 enter, and it asks me, do you want to resize the model? I'll say yes. So now, when I measure this, our, our uh, woman here is going to be 5 foot 8 inches tall. So we're good to go. So again, all I did is with the tape measure tool, I measured from her toes to the top of her head, and then I typed in the new dimension, like maybe I decide 5 foot 9. So you can see my measurements dialog box changed, and now I'm going to force... Uh, shoot, uh, force that to be 5'9". All right, so uh, the reason that happened, typically when you're, when you're um, measuring on this, you want to tap Control, Option on the Mac. See how it's, it's adding a guideline? I don't want to add that guideline. I just want to go up to the top and then type in 5'9", Enter, and then we'll resize the model. Cool. All right, so that's how you use the tape measure tool to set an accurate scale rather quickly. Now, you can see what's happening here is that uh, this is still an image. It's defined as an image. And images kind of behave differently in SketchUp. I find that it's usually better to explode an image and treat it as a texture on a surface. So that's what we're going to do is just right-click and choose Explode. And now that image becomes a texture. So I can see that if I look at my Materials browser and click on the House icon, you can see that we've got uh, a, a texture called Girl 02, and that's applied to the surface. All right, so looking good. Now, the next thing we want to do is uh, if I turn my shadows on, check this out. If I go shadows on and you just get those kind of set up, you know, notice that the shadows, it's just one big block shadow. So in SketchUp, in order to get the shadows to show up, you really have to trace out the image. And I wouldn't say that it has to be perfect. It just needs to be close so that the shadow at least looks like a human figure. So that's what I'm going to do is using my line tool, I'll just kind of zoom in and real quick um, just kind of 
click around and trace. And you know, I'm just being sure that I'm staying on this surface. If I hold shift, I can just kind of stay on the surface. Make sure that you know I'm not coming off at all. And make sure that I'm not like uh, trimming her leg off or anything there. Okay, so that looks good. Like that. You know, as mentioned, it doesn't have to be perfect. As long as that shadow just kind of looks like a, a, the shadow of a human, that's really all we're going for. Not a ton of detail necessary. So just carve this out too. Like that. And like that. Okay. So we've got her, her all kind of set up with the shadow. But now we need to get rid of everything except this surface here. So one way to do that is kind of get tricky with your select tool. So I always do things like I'll triple click to select all connected geometry, and then I'll hold control and shift and double click on the piece that I want to deselect, and then I'll hit delete. And that carves out everything else. Cool? Okay, so now um, let's do this. Let's, uh, we'll leave the line work on while we build this component. Uh, let's go back and check out our shadow settings again. See, now it actually looks like you know, the, a shadow of a human rather than just a big, big rectangle. Okay, so now you notice that as I orbit around her, she's not looking at the camera. So we want to build a face me component because that way, wherever we drop this component into our SketchUp model, she's always going to be facing the camera. That's ideal for, for setting up different camera views and using the same people. So to do that, I need to make her into a component. So I'm just going to triple click uh, just... Uh, double click is really all you need to select all of that connected geometry. Then I'm going to right click and choose make component. And I want to right click on my selection and choose make component. So I'll do that. And uh, we're going to call this, I'll just call her uh, girl. Oh, let's see. Actually, uh, I, I was naming things people uh, 2D underscore. And I'll say girl uh, 02. I'm pretty sure that was the girl number two. All right, so now there's a couple of uh, critical settings here. We've got always face camera. Uh, we've got, uh, we, all, we definitely want to do that. Always face camera means that uh, the, the component is going to turn so that it's always facing the camera. That's like the critical thing with these face me components. Um, the other thing we need to do is set our component axes. Notice that the axes are actually kind of like off her feet right now. Now, this where these the axes are located for the component is going to be the the uh, swivel point, the base point or center point of rotation for the face me component. So I really need that the component axes to be like right where her feet are in order for her to kind of spin properly in, in place. So I'll click on set component axes. I'll zoom in like right down there on her feet and I'm just going to click three times and we're good. So now we've, we've set the axes down here. Uh, always face camera is on. Shadows face sun. Uh, what that means is that um, if, if this is checked off, then you're going to get slivers of a shadow. We want to always see like a nice big shadow. And uh, replace selection with components. So we're good to go. So we'll click on create. And now we've got our our face me component. She's always kind of looking at us, uh, always spinning around. And if we were to have not have those shadows facing the sun, we would get like a sliver of a shadow when when you hit the right angle. So uh, the last thing I want to do here is double click in, double click on the surface, hold Control and Shift or Option and Shift on the Mac, and deselect um, our our image here. And then I'll right click on my selection and choose Hide. And then I can close my component, and we're good. So now we've got that you know, well-built, um, properly scaled uh, 2D face me component that casts a, a proper shadow. So that's looking pretty good. All right, so now um, let's see. So then we want to add this component to our collection. So I can simply right-click on the component and choose Save As. And I'm going to save this to my Desktop, Dropbox, Resources, Components, and we've got people, 2D photo reel, and we're going to go people, uh, 2D girl 2. So we'll just save her there. Cool. All right, so now what this means is when I save this to my component library, that means that uh, whenever I want to access this component, it's always available. I can go to my components, and then I scroll down, go to people, 
and then we've got 2D photo reel. And here we have, this is the one I built yesterday. And then we've got the one that we built today. So what you can do is if we go into something like our SketchUp 101 row, uh, beach house, so SketchUp 101 beach house, uh, we can go in here very easily and say like, all right, we're going to put this kind of beach themed woman there and we'll put her friend there getting ready to go to the beach. So now uh, go to our styles and set it to a different style. And you've got yourself a pretty slick SketchUp rendering with uh, some, you know, solid, uh, some appropriate uh, entourage. You know, people in beach clothes. Uh, you wouldn't want to put men in suits or a bunch of business casual people out here. You want to, the the beach look. So you got to sell that that design and that feeling of the image. So that's what we're getting at here. So that is how you create a face me component in SketchUp. And in the next tutorial, I'll show you how. Uh, you know, SketchUp, it's nice to use these in SketchUp for this type of image, but really what we do a lot of now is photorealistic rendering. So in Lumion, uh, we're going to show you how you can import these models uh, one at a time and drop them into, into Lumion to expand your, your 2D people entourage over there as well. So definitely check out that tutorial. I will see you there.